Good afternoon. Little bonus class today of making chocolate mousse. So I'm sorry that I didn't give you a lot of notice, but I got up this morning, looked at what was in my cupboard and thought, chocolate mousse time, maybe you guys would like to join me. So um, yeah, lovely to have those of you that are watching live, those of you that are watching on replay. That's just my fault for not giving you enough notice. I don't want to force you to go out to the shops. So this is what you're going to need today. Super, super simple. Not many ingredients. You're going to need about 200 grams of dark chocolate. Um, so I'll talk to you about what chocolate I use. Um, can you use lemon mousse? You can, but I've not, not done this recipe with lemon. It does really need the melted chocolate for the texture and the volume. So it's not a kind of sub, but do watch along and see. I'm gonna show you lots of tips and techniques today, how to separate eggs, and there'll be lots of other great things going on, okay? And to, to melt chocolate too. Happy Easter as well, hi mate. So you're going to need some chocolate. You're going to need about 50 grams of caster sugar. If you've got other sugar, that's okay. Um, you're going to need three eggs. We're going to separate those. I'm going to show you what you're going to do. If you're making it vegan or you don't have eggs, as some of you have said in the post today, so fantastic you know about that, aquafaba is amazing. That is basically the water from a can of chickpeas or actually any beans. So normally when you sling it away, and we did that when we made our falafel, it's quite um, murky. It's got quite a distinctive smell, but you won't smell it or taste it once it's in with the chocolate. So drain that off. Next time you drain your beans, just drain them over a little bowl or something. Catch that water. And then I posted up a little um, guide, or you can Google it, for how many spoons is equivalent to an egg. So those of you using aquafaba, you're going to treat it exactly like you do the egg whites, okay? Um, hi, Chloe, round the corner. Thank you for joining me. That's nice. That is very nice. And from Carlisle, I've got lots of people, so that's lovely. And then the last thing that I haven't told you about is you'll just need some water. Um, I'm going to use warm water, so I've actually put hot water in here. It's just cooling down. Um, you can use any bowl, but I've got a, behind here, I've got a big glass mixing bowl, so I can show you what I'm doing. There's two ways that you guys can melt the chocolate today. So first is in a microwave, in a bowl. Let me, with 100 grams of dark chocolate to be okay, you're really gonna need a bit more. If it was closer, I would say you'd be all right, but cocoa is not so great in this mousse. It's not gonna give you the texture and the flavor's not the same. Hi, Elsie, hi, Chloe, hi, Amy. I'm sorry to be a bit difficult today with the substitutes, but trust me, when you try this mousse, you will see that it makes a difference. And that's why I'm not suggesting you use milk chocolate today because milk chocolate seizes. If it was a milk chocolate mousse, I'd do a different one, okay? So it's not exactly that you can substitute um, lots of things. Hi Storm, hi Maggie, that's great. Um, so the other things you're gonna need, depending on if you melt your chocolate, I will show you. You can melt it in a bowl in the microwave and then obviously whatever microwave bowl you have, we're gonna have some water in there, so this sort of thing. I'm gonna do what's called a banmarie, which sounds very fancy, but it's super simple. I've only just got a microwave actually, so I normally do it like this, and you're gonna love it because it just sits on the side. So you want a small saucepan and a bowl, glass bowl, that's gonna fit like that, nice and snug in your saucepan. If you've only got a bigger saucepan, you'll need a bigger bowl. The important thing is you don't wanna have the bottom of this bowl touching the water. So I'm gonna put a little bit of water, like a few centimeters at the bottom, and basically the water, the steam's gonna rise, and that's gonna make my chocolate melt. I'm just gonna put that on my hob. It's so, so simple, okay? Hi from Paul, hi Sarah and Chloe. Happy Easter to you. I was looking for my bunny ears today, so I'm sorry. So that's why when I got up this morning, I thought, what should we do? We'll make something chocolatey and you can all join in. So you can have it for supper tonight or you can have it at least for Sunday, whatever you want, okay? You're using milk chocolate. Milk chocolate today is probably gonna set and seize. I wouldn't do that for this recipe. Um, different mousses. This is an egg-based mousse rather than a cream-based mousse, okay, which is why you need dark chocolate. Basically, whichever chocolate you use, the more dairy it has in it, or the less cocoa, the harder it is to work with. It's not impossible, but it will set. So if you've ever melted chocolate, you've done it in a microwave and it's kind of ended up as a burnt, horrible lump, 
that's what happens. So dark chocolate is better. You do not need to buy anything super expensive. You do not need 70%. These are the two that I think you might have um, most commonly. So Bourneville, this is just eating chocolate. And I wanna show you why I don't normally use this. I know this happens, I think, to be an Aldi one. Um, I like the Sainsbury's one, but basically in any supermarket own brand that is in the eating chocolate aisle is perfect. And that's for two reasons. One is much cheaper and nicer and tastier than um, what you find in the cooking chocolate. And the second is when you actually look at the ingredients, I promise you look at the back and you see the cocoa solids, it will tell you. This one, for example, has 44%. And you would think this is a cheaper, not so nice alternative to Bourneville. This actually has 35, I think, 36, okay? So you don't need very high cocoa, but this is the kind of thing you want. Um, milk chocolate, I'm not sure, give it a go if you want to. My advice probably would be don't, because I think it's gonna seize, and I'd rather you didn't waste it. So have a look at this recipe. We might do a milk chocolate mousse another time. I would probably do that with cream rather than with the eggs today, okay? Right, so before we start, I know you guys know this, so wash your hands. If you've already done that, I have. Pop on your aprons and we're gonna tie up our hair and then I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. So I know you can watch along, please do. I know this, this is really just me cooking in my kitchen today because I didn't give you very much notice. You'll see what to do, you'll get some really good tips and techniques and then watch this back on replay, okay? I'm probably also gonna do another session where I go through with you that list that a lot of you have been emailed about what things I have in my larder so that next time you go out, you can buy a lot of these dried things in and then when I do a recipe, you'll have a lot of the things in your cupboard that I have at home as a stock item and that will help teach you about what to do when you shop as well. So, oh, happy 12th birthday, Felix. That is perfect for your birthday. Very good. And you're having to make your own birthday lunch or supper. And another Nicole from Essex, I can't forget, can't forget you. Um, so Lizette, yeah, I would probably just watch this and see. If you've got loads of chocolate at home and you don't mind giving it a go, then give it a go. But as I say to you, you'll see, I'm gonna add some water to the chocolate and adding water to chocolate is something you never ever do with white um, white chocolate or milk chocolate because it probably will seize. I'm just worried you're gonna end up with a lump and you won't be able to fold it in smoothly. Watch this and just see what happens at the end. And even if you think milk chocolate mousse is better, you will be convinced by this, I promise, okay? So let us start now. I'm going to move this to one side because there's very few ingredients and hopefully you guys know what we need. And all you're going to start doing is taking your chocolate. Um, you want 200 grams and you want to break it up and pop it in your bowl. So I will do that with you. Now this one actually cunningly, this is actually only 180 grams now. So I'm going to pop my scales on. And if you've got scales as well, you know, I show you there's a little on off button and a little tear button where you can change the unit. So we want to have it in G for grams, and then we can pop our bowl on top and just reset that using the tear button. So we're just going to pop in our chocolate. And you just want to break this up. The other reason I really like the supermarket own brand, when I open this up, you'll see it's much thinner and it's easier for kids to break into pieces. This is quite chunky. This is a bit more like dairy milk, if you can kind of see that from the size. Side. So I'm just going to roughly break that in, just into some pieces. You're going to do it tomorrow. It is going to be yummy. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. This is, like I said, a last minute class. We're going to be cooking together tomorrow anyway, but I thought, you know what, let's get some chocolate mousse in it too. So I need a little bit more. And this kind of stuff doesn't go off anyway, so it's always good to have a couple of bars at home. Can you see here, if I take that out, how much thinner that is? So it's much, much easier for little fingers to do that. So we're gonna get 200 grams in there, that is perfect, okay? So you can send me some little smiley faces, pop me a little sad face if I'm going too fast for you, okay? Perfect. So I've just got my chocolate in there. And then you're going to change your units because we measure liquids, not in G, in grams, do we? We measure them in ml, milliliters. So what you want to do is press that little unit button until you get something that says ml. I'll pop that back on. And then you just want to add in some warm water, okay? It can be boiling water, but if you're cooking with kids, warm water from the tap is absolutely fine. And you want 120 milliliters. And you're going to see it starts to get the chocolate melted. This is why this works with dark chocolate, but not so great with milk chocolate or white chocolate, okay? A bit more, perfect. So you can see if I show it to you here, 
right on the top there, you can see the chocolate's changing color and it's just starting to melt a bit. Now, if you're microwaving this, just stick it in your microwave for a minute, give it a stir, come back and see. I'm going to do it in this bain marie, which I'm going to show you. In fact, I put this in the wrong bowl, haven't I? That was silly. I put the wrong bowl that way. I'll get a second one. So I'm just going to put some boiling hot water in the bottom of here. And you just want just a little bit like that on the bottom. You're going to pop that down on your hob and then pop your bowl. I just took a bigger saucepan because so I've got a bigger bowl. And just pop it on top like that and just let that sit there. Okay, so I've turned it on. So just turn it on on a low heat if you've got a gas hob, just on a low light. Um, and just what if you've got boiling water. Um, if not, just bring the water to the boil. And the steam that's going to come up from there is going to melt that chocolate. Okay, so. That's done. I'm going to get a bigger bowl out for this now because I need a big one. And then we're going to start with our eggs. So is everybody okay with how much water? 120 millilitres, Jesse. Okay. So we've just got in 200 grams of chocolate, 120 of water, and you can either go and microwave that or get mum or dad to microwave that, or you can just pop it like I've done in a glass bowl over a, um, a pan of boiling water and just let the steam that comes up, it will just dissolve it. And that's perfect because you can never ever, apart from having too much, um, too little water at the bottom and your pan boils dry, you will never have a problem with this chocolate. It would always be perfect. Sometimes people put it in the microwave and they heat it too much and it seizes or it burns, you will not have that problem. So I'm gonna turn this down, mine starts to boil, so that's perfect. Right, lovely. Okay, hi Dylan and Frank, and you're trying with half half. That's okay, so let's see what happens. Be careful when you put the um, hot, um, hot water in, just keep stirring it. You might want to stir that if you're using milk chocolate, okay? How much chickpea juice? Um, Nicola, I put a little thing up, I think from memory, it was three tablespoons is the same as one egg, but just double check. There was a link in the post above, otherwise just Google how much aquafaba equals one egg and you'll find it, okay? You're gonna make the pizza today, Sheeta, that's fantastic. You know, pizza and chocolate mousse, perfect, perfect mix, okay. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to separate eggs. And I'm going to show you a couple of ways. So if you're at home and you're doing this um, with the kids, this is the way to do it. And I'm going to show you two ways you will never have a problem. So I've got two bowls. The first thing that's important is we're going to separate our eggs and we're going to need the yolks, which is the yellow bit. And we're going to need the whites. We're going to beat the whites up really stiff. That's the equivalent of the aquafaba bit. It's going to make it really nice and fluffy, have a really, really light mousse. Okay. Um, and to do that, what we need to do is we need to separate the eggs. And when you're using egg whites, it's really important you don't get the yolks in the whites because then they won't beat up. You can get a bit more white in the yolk, but not the other way around. So to do that, so we don't have a mess, but we're going to use little bowls so that if we have an accident and we mix them together, we don't need to throw all of the eggs away. Now, if you do have an accident and the yolk and the white mixes together, it's not a problem. You can use it for scrambled eggs or for cakes or for anything else you're going to do. So don't waste it. Don't throw it away. Okay. So happy Easter, Erin. Is that, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, but anyway, happy Easter. So I'm going to show you. So your egg, if you look at it, it's kind of got a little hat. You know, if you have a hard boiled egg or a soft boiled egg and you stick it in a little egg cup, it comes to that little point at the top. So you want to hold it like this sideways. And we're going to tap, tap, tap until you see it. If I bring it up, you've got a nice crack. So be firm. And then we're going to hold it this way up like it's got a hat. We're going to lift the top off. And you can see already that white just dropping into the bowl. Now I'm going to imagine that I've got a little container here and I'm going to pour the yolk from one into the other. I don't want to pour it too many times because you can see as I pour it, the yolk is bigger and it sits in that little shell, but the white falls in the bowl. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move my eggs here so you can see this, is basically I've got a little bowl of white, which might not be so obvious there because the bowl's a bit blue, and I'm going to pour my white into my clean bowl. And then my yolks, I'm just going to pop in another bowl there, okay? That's one way of doing it. And now I'm going to show you another way that you might like to do with the kids. So little people that are watching this, you're going to like this. This is what I call a bear claw. So your hands like this, we want to make it into a claw shape, not really closed, kind of open with a bit of a gap between my fingers. OK, so not together, a bit open. So what we're going to do is you're going to tap, 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 just like we did before. 
gently, you're gonna crack your egg into the bowl, not from a big height, because if I do it from a really big height like this, then my yolk is gonna pop. So I've just got an egg in here. And if you're doing this with a grown up at home, get your grown ups to do this bit. Now I'm gonna take my bear claw and I'm gonna go scooping. So I'm gonna go into the bowl like that. And because my hands have got fingers open, you can see I'm like a sieve and all of that white, can you see that is just dropping into the bowl. So I've got white in my bowl and I've got a nice little yolk in my hand, okay? So I'm gonna pop my yolk in my yolk bowl, pop my white in my white bowl, okay? So we'll do that again. Hi, Yasmin and hi, Lena. See what it's like with half and half. I normally wouldn't do this with milk chocolate now because ingredients are so scarce and I'm a bit worried about you wasting it. Give it a go, it might seed. So if I would do it this way, definitely not in the microwave, okay? Um, but keep me posted with the comments and let me know and, and we'll work it out. Keep stirring it as it's melting, okay? So you can do your third egg, so however you're doing it, and I'll show you, you can do an egg if you're practicing at home, because this is such a good skill for practicing when you cook, you can do it both ways. So I'll show you that now. So tap, tap, tap. Hold the hat up. I'm gonna lift that hat off the top of my egg and all that white starts to drip down. And then I'm gonna pour from one to the other. Now you don't wanna prep the egg on the sharp bit of shell. And now that I have actually separated it, I'm gonna show you the other techniques. So I'm gently gonna tip my yolk back in. So if I show you there, I've got a full egg in my bowl now. It's a bit difficult for me to pour it right up close because I'm worried it's gonna pour on the table. And I'm gonna go with my bare claw in there, scoopy scoop, and you can see that the white just drops off. And don't worry about that little bit that you've left. Remember, we don't wanna get yolk in the white, so it's better to have a little bit of white left. So my yolk goes in my yolk bowl, my white goes in my white bowl, and then definitely now time for pan washing, okay? Right, so hi, Dulcie, yeah, is that Dulcie or Dulcie? Hello, and happy Easter to you. So I'm just gonna wait while you do your eggs, and what you'll see is you end up with this white stuff, and I know we say it's white, but I put it in a bowl so you can see it's kind of a bit yellowy. And then in my other bowl, I've got three lovely egg yolks that you can probably see there. Again, I don't want to take too much. Okay, and if your egg yolks have popped, don't worry, it's fine. So, I've also got my chocolate melting here. I'm just gonna give it a bit of a stir. It's almost perfect already. That water's just really helping it melt. You just tasted the melted dark chocolate, it's quite rich. You don't need to, we're gonna add sugar in a minute, okay? So don't worry about this. That's why I use eating chocolate because it's already sweet. Don't panic, trust me on this nipper, I promise you guys, okay? So, perfect. So if you guys are done, what we're gonna do is, this is when you're gonna need your hand whisk or something else. Hi Lexi, happy Easter. You're using cooking chocolate, that's fine. And Michelle, that's one of the reasons I don't normally use cooking chocolate, so it's a really good tip. It'll be fine, do not worry if it's grainy at the moment. We'll get that out, but next time, just go to the eating chocolate aisle where all the sweets and stuff are and just buy the regular supermarket own brand. I promise I will change your life. And it helps, it's so much cheaper as well. Um, I always think if you don't want to eat it, if you wouldn't eat a bar of cooking chocolate, why would you want to cook with it? So it's fine. You don't need to go for the really expensive Lindt 70% stuff either. That is definitely too bitter. So let me turn this down because my chocolate is getting quite hot. Perfect. You jump in the garden. Now, if your chocolate is melted, actually, while we're doing that, because you're all asking me about chocolate, I'm going to show you. I'm going to take out a little board. Now, it shouldn't take too long. You can see I've really done nothing to it. If you're doing this at home and it's over water, please be careful to wipe the bottom. Don't let the kids pick this up in case hot water drips. So you can see now it does look quite grainy. If I lift this up and I give you a spoon, you'll kind of see it's a bit grainy there. And all you want to do slowly is just mix it. This is lovely and it smells. It's like having a hmm, chocolate face sauna or something. It smells amazing. So hi, Lucas. It's our, is it mummy's birthday next week? You're going to make those? Perfect. I think, Lucas, you should maybe actually try it now just to make sure it's okay. What do you think? Um, you're going to do this tonight. Perfect, Helen. That's fine. So you can watch this. This is going to go up on replay here and up on replay on YouTube, but it's always good to watch and then you'll know. So you can see just from stirring it for a few minutes, Look how lovely and soft that is. No more lumps, no more grains. I'm just gonna lift that up and show you. And I'm just using a spatula, you can use whatever you want. It's like chocolate soup at the moment. You did milk chocolate in the microwave, that's fine. Did you add the water in, Joe, as well? Was it all right? Kind of sometimes depends on how much milk chocolate, because some have got a lot more um, cocoa solids in. So as I said, the one I'm using is only 44%, so you might find it's okay. So it's good to know. 
Right, so you can see, it looks lovely. Really nice, you know, all those lumps I had pretty much all gone out, all right? And then what you're gonna do, you don't wanna do it when it's too hot, so normally I would leave it to cool a little bit, but I think it's cooled a bit here, is you've got your egg yolks, and you're gonna tip your egg yolks in, and as you tip them in, I want you to stir it quite quickly because we don't wanna end up with scrambled eggs. Could I say a shout out to Megan, Harvey, and Jackson? Of course I can, did I get that right? And Molly, hi Molly, you're stirring your chocolate. So when it's all lump free and it's like chocolate soup, those of you that have watched Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, it's like the water, isn't it, in, in the lake. You're gonna tip in your eggs, your yolks, and we're just gonna give them a mix. Now, if you're using aquafaba, you might just wanna use a bit more when we beat the other stuff up, and I'll show you that. And you can see immediately it's starting to thicken. This is like a chocolate custard, okay? So you know how it was all soupy? If I show you this, can you see now how it's got a lot thicker? Yeah? And that should be delicious. It's worked. Perfect. Good. Okay. Well, we're all learning together. That's what I like. That is what I like. Normally, I do a cream mousse for a, um, a milk chocolate mousse. But even for dark chocolate haters, I promise this is good. And you'll see why in a minute. It's the lightness from the egg whites. So basically, I've got a really nice kind of chocolate custard here, and then we're going to beat up our egg whites. Okay, so I'm just going to put this to one side. And then what we're going to do, and I'm going to make a bit of a noise so you can watch this first. I'm going to show you something really fun. I've got this in the um, in a glass bowl. So those of you cooking with mum and dad, ask them if they've had a hair wash and you're about to do something fun. So we're just basically going to use our hand mixer, or if you've got something else, that's also fine. You can put it on full whack on high speed, and I want you to watch and see what happens. So we've got a liquid here, and it's all clear, a bit yellow, really. Watch what's going to happen. It so gets really frothy. Can you see that? And look already, it's starting to go white. And I'm going to beat it until it looks like snow. For a few minutes, go round and round and round, make a nice noise. Getting thicker, can you see it's getting higher and higher up in the bowl, getting thicker and thicker. And I want it to be really thick, like snowy feet. I think that's good. So when it leaves a lovely little trail can you see the little pattern from my beaters in there and you can see that although i've got bits hanging off my beaters there they're not dropping if this was cake mix it would fall so they're nice snowy peaks and then what you want to do so that you know that they're right is you want to tip it upside down like that over somebody's head i don't want to do it right above there because you won't see it um, and basically your bowl shouldn't move okay that's how you know they're so stiff if you have a look in there you might see those little peaks okay and then once you've got it really peaky we're gonna take that sugar, so for those of you that thought the chocolate was a bit bitter, I haven't forgotten about the sugar, and we're gonna sprinkle a bit in and just beat it a bit more. So a little sprinkle, a little beat, a little sprinkle, and just do that until all the sugar is in there. And still really nice and peaky, can you see those from the side? Nothing's dropping off. So, this is the first time you haven't scrambled your eggs. Perfect. When to do the chickpea water? Yeah. So if you're using chickpea water, do exactly what I've just done. So put the chickpea water in the bowl, beat it up so it's really thick. It will look like this. So you'll use it, count out the amount for three egg whites. You won't have the yolk. So if you want to do a little bit more and add some to that, that's also fine, okay? Or you, it's up to you. It's about, I think we said about three tablespoons for each egg. So, perfect. So you can get rid of your beaters. You won't need them after this. So basically, you've got your melted chocolate with your egg yolks in it, or not if you're doing vegan one and you're just using aquafaba. And then you'll have a big bowl of really nice and stiff egg whites. And again, when you've put the sugar in, you should be able to do that too, okay, and just tip it out. So this is one of the most fun things I do at classes. So we always pick the person with the nicest hairstyle who's just washed their hair and we tip it upside down, okay? So make sure it doesn't fall out the bowl. It's never fallen out in 10 years of me cooking with the kids, but there was always the first time. So I don't want that to be you at home. Right, so let's see if we've got any more questions or if we're good to go. So you can give me a little thumbs up or a smiley if everybody is good, and then I will show you how we put the two things together. 
So if you're using Aquafaba, you'll have something that looks very, very much like this, okay? And you can do exactly the same stuff with it. So, lovely. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold the eggs into the chocolate, or you can do it the other way around. Normally what I do is I would have a bowl with a spout, and then I put it, mix it in the bowl with the spout, so it's going to be easier to pour out, but it really doesn't make a difference. So I'm just going to show you today, I'm going to put my whites in here so you can see. So what we're going to do is we're going to scrape in all of the whites like that, just let them plop into your bowl, look a really nice, big, stiff bit of whites, and the same if you're using the chickpea water. And then all we're going to do is we're gently going to fold them. So we're not going to do what we do with cake mixing and beat it and beat it and beat it. We're going to gently fold because we want to keep that white. So we're kind of folding. Can you see over? So I like scrape the bottom and turn it over. So every time I'm getting chocolate from the bottom over. I've got a question of sugar. Yes. So when you've beaten your egg whites and they're stiff the first time, then you sprinkle the sugar in and beat it a bit more, okay? So just add it in there. And the same with the aquafaba. So beat the egg, um, beat the chickpea water till it's really stiff, then beat in a little bit more with the sugar too. Okay. So I'm gently, gently, can you see, folding it? And you can see, that's why I've given a glass bowl today so you guys can see. I want to make sure that all of that white gets folded in and everything goes brown, but I want to be really gentle. So I'm using a spatula, you can use a metal spoon, whatever you want, just putting it through the big lumpy bits, stirring them in. Your egg whites are a bit runny. They need to be super stiff, Candy. So as stiff as I showed you, when you can tip the bowl upside down, it doesn't move, okay? It should look like snowy peaks. It depends how powerful your mixer is. You might need to go for a little bit longer than I did, okay? So make sure they're stiff because um, you want that really nice fluffy white thing. Okay. So you just want to be really patient. And you can see every time I'm stirring it here, I'm getting like a bit of dark chocolate, like a ripple from the bottom. And I just want to keep going until I don't get any more ripples and all of those white lumps are folded in. So if I see a lump, I might give it a little knock like that and just then fold it back in. So I know some of you asked about raw egg whites and mousse like this is generally not cooked. So obviously do be careful with the elderly, um, with pregnant um, women and stuff like that. But all eggs nowadays are date stamped. So when you look at your egg, you'll see there's a little date stamp, which is like a sell by date. And if you use a lot of eggs, as I do, and you buy them somewhere nice and they're good quality eggs, you will not have a problem with salmonella or anything. I wouldn't suggest eating a whole raw one, but this kind of thing is absolutely fine. So just checking, should you put the sugar in? We've done that one. Perfect. Right. Okay. So you'll end up with something that still does look quite soupy. Don't panic. But you want it to be all folded through. And if I bring this up, hopefully you'll see. You should see it's got really lovely little bubbly holes and that's all of the egg whites, that's all of the lightness in there, okay? So you want it to look like soup. If you've got a nice glass bowl like mine, always good to have a little look underneath and see if you have scraped the bottom and you've got a clean bottom and then it's sugar's in, perfect, exactly, 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 bit by bit. And then all you're gonna do is I've got some nice little pots. So I've got some little regular ramekins. It makes usually about eight, depending on how big yours are. I've got some little glass pots, so if anybody's bought uh, like those goo puddings or things like that from M&S in the past, you can use those, just wash those out and reuse them. You can do it in a big um, dish as well. I wouldn't do anything too high, so like I wouldn't pour my chocolate mousse in something like that, but like a flat serving dish if you want to serve it in a big portion, or little if you've got little vodka shot glasses, something like that is perfect, okay? Yes, I have put all of the sugar in, but a bit by a bit. So when the egg whites are stiff, you're just going to pour a little bit in, until it's really nice and stiff still, and then you're gonna fold the whites in with the chocolate until you've got something that looks nice and soupy but bubbly. If you look at the top, it should be all nice and bubbly. So give me a thumbs up so I can see that you guys are good and that we haven't got any more questions. And if you're aquafaba, it's exactly the same, okay? Um, there's usually more aquafaba in a tin of chickpeas or whatever beans you use. You won't use all of it, so you can store it in the fridge. If you feel your mousse is a little bit runny, you could just use a bit more because obviously you don't have the egg yolks. The egg yolks are what make it a bit more custardy, so your mousse may be a little bit less set today, okay? So, perfect thumbs up. I'm liking that. Now, I'm going to pour in here. I am going to make a mess. I'm warning you because I don't have a spout. So if you want to, what you could do is you could use like a kind of soup ladle, or um, well hopefully you've been more sensible than me and you've got it in a bowl with spout. So you basically just want to take a bit and just fill it up, more to the top, so you filled it out evenly, 
Chef's perks will be licking all of it to the dribble. It will look soupy, do not panic. You're not gonna eat it now, it's gonna go into the fridge to set. So just see, and you should end up, I think normally I do about eight. Depends on the size of the bowl, so let's do that. Right, can I add strawberries? I would add strawberries onto the top after. Don't put them in now, because now is a bit soupy and they'll just fall in. Um, unless you want strawberries at the bottom, maybe that's a bit like creme brulee like, that would be nice. So normally what I do is do this, slice up the strawberries, and then before I'm gonna serve them, make put a nice one on the top, it'll be nice. So looking lush, good, I like it, I like it. So um, how much sugar? It was um, 50 grams of sugar, Becky, wasn't a lot. And the reason is I don't like it too sweet, but also if you're using eating chocolate and not 70%, it's got a fair bit of sugar in there anyway. So that's one of the reasons this is not as kind of dark um, a mousse as, as you might think, even if you're a, a dark chocolate hater. So let me give myself a little sweep here. So yeah, I think we're gonna get eight. Much easier if you do it in a bowl with a pouring spout. Let's break that off. And obviously these things, it doesn't need me to tell you, do not need to be washed up, they need to be licked up. It's so delicious. Um, so let's do my last one. So these spoon spatulas are amazing just for scraping the last bit out. So you don't want to waste any of this. I know you will lick the bowl, but it's good to make sure you've got eight evenly sized ones. Let me see. I'm just going to use that bit. And if you can see any white bits in the top of your mousse, like there's a tiny one there, just take a little spoon or whatever you're using and just knock it out a bit. Um, because you don't want a white lump when you eat it. Um, it's more for looks than anything else. And then obviously if you dribble down the side, just give it a little clean. I'm going to take a little cloth actually. Let me get the cloth. Give us a bit of kitchen roll and just tidy up where you've had a dribble, because that will look a bit neater. I dribbled on that one. Right, how are we doing? Okay, and that is literally all you do. It's so easy, it's really quick. And then they go straight in the fridge and they're gonna set. You want them to set for a few hours until they firm up. And that's the point that I would then pop in some um, strawberries or whatever else you're using, okay? So what I will do, I'll pop this here. I'm just gonna pop mine up here so you can see. So here are my chocolate mousses, don't they look lovely? And as I say, they're just going to, if I give them a bit of a wobble, you'll see in the glass dishes, they're still really, really soft. They're just going to go in the fridge. They're going to set perfectly like that. And then they're fine in the fridge for a good few days if they last that long. Um, but obviously they're not ready to eat immediately because we're waiting for the egg to set. And the same will be true with the apple father, okay? So, how are we doing? How are you done? Do they look good? So a little bit of a, a special bonus today over Easter. I just thought I couldn't resist doing something chocolatey. So thank you so much to you guys that joined me today that had the stuff in your cupboards. To those that are watching on replay, my mistake, not yours, just for not giving you enough notice, but I really hope you're enjoying it. Please share, <coughs> excuse me, please share your photos as you always do, because I love to give the chefs praise and see what you've got up to. Those of you that have done it with milk chocolate, do definitely put that in the comments so you can let people know. Um, the important thing, as I said to you, was sometimes the milk chocolate can seize with the water. So if you kept beating that and it was fine, perfect, you did really well. So I know there's one of two of you that did that. And let us know as well with the aquafaba how that worked. Um, you was might, as I said, a little bit thinner because you haven't got the thickening agent of the, um, the, the egg yolks, okay? It does look lush, doesn't it? So I'm glad you like it. It tastes super lovely. So rather than embarrass myself on screen, I'm going to let you get to doing that like I'm going to do and lick my bowls. So have an amazing afternoon and we're back here tomorrow, 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, that's Saturday. We're going to be making little frittatas together. Um, run through the recipe. The recipes are going to be, I'm going to post them up. I have posted the ingredients for this. The video will be up here on replay and on replay on YouTube. And the recipes for anything else, you need to subscribe to the mailing list, which is at www.thekidskitchen.net. And you will get the recipes, two recipes for the two classes each week. Okay. But any questions, obviously, 
pop that in the comments. So thank you so much again for joining. Enjoy licking your bowls and I will see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye.